Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the principles that are involved with Breaking Bad News. Breaking Bad News is a favourite OSCE station. It allows you to show off your communication skills and your consultation skills and as well as that your empathetic skills. So without further ado, let's get started. The mnemonic that I like to use, that I practice as a medical student, as a trainee and now that I practice as a doctor is SPIKES. S stands for setting, P stands for perception, I stands for invitation, K stands for knowledge, E stands for emotion and S stands for strategy and summarising. Setting essentially means setting the scene for when you're bringing the patient into the room. So you may want to check that the chairs are in the correct order and orientation or if the patient's bringing someone in with them, you want to make sure there's an extra chair for a relative or a friend to sit down on. You may want to ensure that there's a box of tissues in case the patient becomes upset. And also making sure that you don't get interrupted. So if you're breaking bad news, you may want to let um, other staff know that, that that's what you're doing and that um, you're not disturbed. So this may be a sign on the door saying, do not disturb. All of these things are obviously either in real life or in a face-to-face -face OSCE. If it's a remote OSCE, then you may want to explain to the examiner that this is what you'd normally do um, if it wasn't for a, a remote consultation. P is for perception. So don't forget to introduce yourself. And also you really want to get an idea of the patient's perceptions of why they are there. So it might be, for instance, if, the, if you're explaining the chest x-ray to a patient, you may ask them, Mrs. Smith, I'm, I understand that you're here for me to explain your chest x-ray, but please can you give me um, an idea as to why you had the chest x-ray done in the first place? Or it may be bloods. Mrs. Smith, I've got your blood test results here, but please can you give me an idea as to why the blood tests were done? What this does is, A, it allows the patient to explore the journey and to make connections in their head, it's important that we allow the patient to talk and to put all the all the bits together of you know why they went to see their GP. You know, doctor, I was worried that I you know I was worried about my weight loss. I was worried about my persistent cough. So I went to see my GP who arranged a chest X-ray. They the patient may even give an idea as to what the GP was worried about. Again, all of this really allows the patient to put the story together and to make links themselves, so that when you break the bad news, it's not this massive shock horror they've already kind of put the story together themselves. It also importantly builds rapport. If you allow the patient to talk, express what their ideas were, express what their concerns were, it shows that you are um, a, a great doctor that's got that sort of empathetic skills and also you want to get your patient side of the story. Eyes of invitation. So what this means is that you want to get an idea as to how much information the patient wants. So the patient may just want to have a little bit of, uh, of information or they may want to know the whole situation. Patients are very different. Some are very doctor-centered. So what I mean by that is, doctor, I trust you. Um, tell me what's on the chest x-ray and tell me what the next stage is. And they don't really want the bit in, in the middle. Whereas other patients want to know every single bit of detail. So before you um, ramble on with all the information, get an idea as to how much they want to know um, because everyone varies. Knowledge. So this is where you actually impart the breaking bad news. You may want to start off with what we call a warning shot. So what this is, is something along the lines of, okay, Mr. Smith, I've got your chest x-ray results here. I'm sorry to say that unfortunately, etc, etc. So do you see, you're using words such as unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, and you're giving those warning shots to the patient so that the next few words or sentences that come out of your mouth is not a complete shock. And you're ensuring that there's silences between each of those couple of words, again, allowing the patient to sort of get a feel for the scenario, get a feel for what you may be coming out with next. When you do actually provide the knowledge and you actually do break the bad news, so that might be, we've noticed a suspicious uh, lesion on the chest x-ray, for instance. Um, you want to make sure that you give the information in small chunks. Again, this is to allow the patient to reflect on what you're saying. It also gives them an opportunity to absorb um, what's been said and also for them to say, well, doctor, do you mind just repeating the previous sentence? And the patient at this point is going to be bombarded with so many thoughts in their head. So give small chunks, allow them to absorb it 
um, and also to ask any questions at that point. Really important, you also avoid any medical jargon, avoid using medical terminology to try and make it as, um, as sort of simple as possible for them to absorb. And this is why perception is really important because if the patient in, in the perce perception aspect of breaking bad news has used words such as cancer, then you may then be more likely to use that word. Um, and rather than sort of beating around the bush, you, you may want to be a bit more direct if that's what they're worried about when they went to see their GP. Emotions. This is a very emotional OSCE station, so there's going to be different types of emotion, whether that's a patient crying, a patient getting upset, in denial. You really want to, as the doctor, be aware of those emotions and reflect those emotions back to the patient. If you are faced with a patient who is crying, try not to talk over that crying. Allow them to have 30 seconds, for instance, of, of, of crying and being tearful, and then you may just want to say, Look, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry, um, I'm sorry that I've had to give you this bad news, I can see you're so upset. You need to be as human as possible. You would say the same things to a friend if you told a friend bad news you would use the same empathetic skills. Nothing is different in the Soski station. Um, and it's very important that you do reflect that emotion back to the patient. The emotion that you have might not be the emotion that you expect. A prime example of this is a patient that thought they had diabetes. So in the perception aspect of things, they're saying that I had weight loss and that I was um, extremely thirsty. I went to see my GP because I was worried I have cancer. But actually you're breaking the bad news that this patient has diabetes. So they're not actually that upset, in fact they're relieved. So really get an idea as to how the patient feels, what their thoughts were, and actually don't be surprised by an emotion. Also remember that in real life, that the patient may not be showing their real emotions when they're talking to you. They might be in denial, and then actually when they get home, that's when it all hits them. So just reflect it back to them, be open about how they are feeling, and just make sure that you're an empathetic ear. Strategy and summary. So essentially strategy means that you're putting a plan of action together. So you've given all this bad news, you've been empathetic, you've had great communication skill, and now you're showing your clinical acumen by saying, this is what the next step is. So I'm going to refer you to the lung clinic, I'm going to do X and Y in investigation. Really what you're doing is you're just tying it all together and saying, look, this is the next step. You're also summarising, so this might be a brief, you know, this is something we've discussed today, this is what I'm doing today. You may provide a inf uh, patient information leaflet for the patient to go through at a later date with their loved ones. You'll also give an opportunity for the patient to ask any questions. Remember, most patients probably won't have any questions at that point because they're just so shocked by what's happened. So ensure that you give them that follow-up and say, look, we can always, um, you can always come back and see me in a week's time if you've got any questions that come along in the meantime. I hope all this information was useful. Uh, Breaking Bad News is a odd station. It can be quite difficult, but it's as long as you remember all the key principles, um, show those great communication skills, uh, verbal and non-verbal communication and be empathetic and most importantly just be human. Um, hopefully you'll ace this Oski station. Best of luck.